Some time ago, I did a review of the Überleben Kessel. It's both a kettle and a pot. And I really liked that pot. In fact, I didn't think there was much you could do to improve upon it. But then Überleben came up with a Generation 2, and I was proven wrong. They did make it better. Even better now, they just came out with it in titanium. And I have it, and I want to share it with you. If you're interested, keep watching. So my new titanium Kessel was sent to me by Überleben for testing and review, and I did not pay for it, but I'm not receiving any compensation for the making of this video. Now, I'm not going to go back and go over the stainless steel version in any depth, because, of course, I do have a complete review on that, which I will link at the end of this video if you're interested in seeing that. But I will talk about the differences between the first generation in stainless steel and the second generation, especially in titanium. So what's different between between the old kettle and the new kettle. Well, when I got them, I laid them down side by side. First thing I noticed is they're virtually identical in size. They're, you know, they're, the capacity is the same. In fact, the lids could interchange if you'd want to do that, but, but of course, why would you? Stainless steel and titanium. So they're virtually the same thing in size. So what did they change? Well, the first and most obvious thing is they removed the paracord wrap from the handle, being as it was both unnecessary and it did happen to me, and I'm sure it must have happened to other people. Uh, it would melt if it got too close to the flame. So I was always trying to push it up the handle a little bit to make sure it didn't get melted onto the handle. And it really did not add a whole lot in terms of protection for your hands because I'm either using a glove or my bandana or something else to grab onto the kettle anyway. So that wasn't a big loss to remove the paracord. And if you want, you can put some paracord back on this if you think that's something that you want to do. In fact, I may put a little paracord just a little ways down on this handle, but I'll talk about why in a moment. So what else did they change? Well, on the front of the original kettle, they had a welded or spot welded on spout. So the kettle was completely cylindrical. It did have holes on the inside, some quite large diameter holes, and then a spot welded spout. Well, now you can see that they have changed the front of the kettle so that the spout has been or spout, spout has been formed into the wall, the side wall of the Kessel. So, uh, improvement, maybe not an improvement, but I can understand it probably is, enables manufacturing to be a little cheaper. Maybe it actually adds to the lightening of the stove or of the kettle. I'm sure it does. So that was another change. What else did they change? Well, here's a big change in my mind. Improvement, yes. Uh, it added a little tiny bit of weight, interestingly, but a big improvement. On the original Kessel, the knurled knob that was used for taking the handle on and off was very thin in diameter. Not so bad that you couldn't use it, but it was hard to get tight for whatever reason. In fact, it had a slot in it that you could use a screwdriver or a coin or something else to tighten it on if you found that you weren't getting it on tight enough. They have increased the size, and don't worry, I'm going to show you in a second uh, this apart so you can see what I mean. They've increased the diameter to about three quarters of an inch, I guess, and makes it much easier for getting on and off, makes it easier for you to tighten up so that you don't have a loose handle on top. Other than that, there's not a lot difference between the first generation and the second generation uh, Kessel, but boy, oh boy, when they came out with it in titanium, this is a game changer in a lot of ways. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not absolutely perfect, and I do have something I want to share with you. I think there is room for improvement, but uh, the titanium makes a big difference. Oh, I just realized there's one more thing they did to the second generation that wasn't on the first generation, and hopefully it shows up. There are three vent holes drilled in the lid that just add for a little bit of venting, I guess. It would help if you're pouring water off, if you're cooking in it, and you want to pour off some water from spaghetti or whatever else you have in there. So there are three vent holes. Ah, okay, so titanium versus stainless steel. So I weighed my stainless steel Kessel before I came out today, and it came in at 14.6 ounces. And I'll put the weights, of course, in the uh, video description below. And then I weighed this guy, 7.3 ounces, literally half the weight of the stainless steel one. Boy, oh boy. You know, when I thought they couldn't make it any better, I was wrong. This is as near perfect a pot as you can ask for. Near perfect, not quite, but near perfect. If I haven't pointed this out before, there's a few things I like about the castle. One is this wooden knob, and you're thinking, mm, I don't know. But you know what? 
when you go to pour from this, if the lid is at all loose on top of a pot, you end up doing one of two things, either extending a finger down to try to keep it from falling off, or using two hands to keep it from falling off. That usually requires either a stick or a glove or something to keep you from burning yourself with any other kettle. With this one, no problem. Putting my finger on top of the knob or lifting the pot lid off, that wooden handle insulates perfectly and it's just easy to get off that with that hand that little knob on top. Um, okay so the other thing about the handle is it's a tiny bit shorter about a quarter of an inch shorter. No big deal in fact I don't see it as an impairment at all. In fact it may be an improvement because one of the things that I found is if I was hooking on to a toggle or a hook of some type to hang this over the fire that the balance point being forward, forward even more wanted to make the, the kettle tilt like this. Now that the handle is a tiny bit shorter it's almost a perfect hang. Now I can improve that with a little bit of paracord just to bring the the edge of it back a little bit so any hook or toggle that I'm going to use will uh, will actually hang it on you know perfectly right about there can you see where I've, I'm holding it that's about the perfect hang. All right enough about that let's take a look at the improvement to the knurled knob and one area I think they can improve just a little bit more so I'm going to take the lid off so here is the new knurled knob on it you can see it's quite large makes it easy for getting the handle on and off and when you the kettle comes to you it will be stored inside of the pot and it fits in there well enough and it goes on well enough uh, here's what I want to show you where I think there might be room for improvement. I have seen people do this I've tried it with mixed success and that is rather than attaching the handle like this to the pot what if I turned it around and attached it like that and you can do that let me do it I'll show you line it up and screw it on so there we go okay so you can do that the only problem is the two flanges that are on the base of the handle that are there for keeping the handle from rotating aren't there for this so unless you get that good and tight the handle may rotate especially with contents in it so I, I have had that issue it hasn't poured out on me or anything else it's simply a matter of tightening it up good and tight what could they do to improve this to make sure that it's that much more versatile let me give you a close-up of the flange sometimes I understand you have to block your face in order for you people for you to see this on camera if you can see the flange on the bottom and it curves in this direction then if they had the same thing curving backwards then that would lock into the sides of the attachment point on the pot and prevent it from turning. That's about the only improvement that I can see that you can have or that could be done with this kettle. It might add to the manufacturing cost a little bit but it would certainly make it just that much more versatile. All right I wanted to show you the case that goes with it. This is something else that they've changed from second, or first generation to the second generation. First generation came with a heavy canvas drawstring bag that works very well. Uh, mine is filthy right now. I've got to see if I can get some of the dirt out of it. And it can be used for collecting up some tinder or whatever else you want. Um, this one's a little different. This is a waxed canvas and you can see just a nice quality wax canvas. Again, it could be used for collecting some tinder up, I guess but it requires you to take the handle off in order to store the kettle inside. Just trying to get around the uh, end of the screw there. There we go. So now I have it completely stored inside. Boy, what a lightweight package. I really like this. All right. I've gone on long enough about the Uberlieb and Kessel and Titanium. I will provide the links to where you can purchase this, ke this kettle slash pot in the show notes below. Believe me, you're going to see this out in the woods a lot. I just made a cup of tea with it and I thought good time to share with you my thoughts on it. All right, if you have any comments or any questions about the Uberlieb and Kessel, please put them in the show notes or in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.